as we go ahead and continue our talk about the atom, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the development of the periodic table. Now, again, as that periodic table was being developed, again, scientists were taking their stabs at trying to create this periodic table that made sense. Now, the first individual to begin to look at the periodic table and give us uh, something that really resembled our periodic table was an individual by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev. Now, Dmitry Mendeleev, he was a Russian chemist, and he's given really the title of the father of the periodic table. And again, the reason why he's given that title is because he gave us something that resembled what we currently have today. What he said was the elements were a function of their atomic masses. Now before we go ahead and begin to look at that portion of atomic masses, what I want to tell you is about at his time there were about oh, 48 to 60 elements that were known to man. And what he did is he looked at a lot of the physical properties associated with those elements. And another thing that he did was he looked at the chemical properties associated with those elements also. And what he did was he began to group them according to things that looked alike and things that reacted alike. And like I said, he organized them by how they reacted with some test elements. Now what Mendeleev believed was he believed that these similar properties, now when I say properties I mean both physical and chemical. So Mendeleev believed that the physical and chemical properties occurred after periods and periods are going to be known as your horizontal rows and he said that they could vary in length. We had some earlier scientists that tried to go six elements across and then start a new line, six elements across and start a new line and go six elements across. Well when you look at our periodic table you notice that there's there's spaces in between, sometimes it's two elements, sometimes it's eight elements, sometimes it's 18 elements in length. So Mendeleev was the first scientist to say that those rows could vary in length. So let's go ahead and look at Mendeleev's periodic table. For example, he knew the element aluminum existed. He knew the element silicon existed and he knew the element phosphorus existed. Again, what he did was he compared some of the masses between aluminum and silicon, how much silicon went up. He saw how far phosphorus went up. He all of a sudden knew the next element was gallium and gallium had a lot of the same characteristics as aluminum. Now the next element that he knew of was arsenic and it had more similar properties to phosphorus than it did silicon so he put it over here. Indium, he knew it existed and he knew tin existed also. Now the thing is silicon and tin behaved alike but he noticed that there was too large of a jump in order for tin to be placed right here. So what he did was he said, you know, there must be an unknown element that goes there. And the thing is, his periodic table had lots of unknown spaces on his periodic table. So instead of just leaving it unknown, what he did is he gave it a name. And he called this unknown element Eka Silicon. And he said if Eka Silicon exists, it's going to have a mass of about 72. He said that it was going to have an extremely high melting point. He said it was going to have a density of about 5.5. Now, he said it was going to be a dark gray metal. Now, how dark and gray it was, I really don't know. And he said that it had a physical property that when it combined with oxygen, it would form a formula of ESO2. Mendeleev dies. He never actually sees this element found. But after many years, scientists actually found this element. And when they began to do careful measurements of it, they found out that it had a mass of 72.61. Remember, Mendeleev said 72. He said it was going to have a high melting point. Its melting point is actually 945 degrees Celsius. He said a density of about 5.5 actually have, has a density of 5.323. It was indeed a gray metal. Now, how gray and how dark gray he said it was, but it was a gray metal. And in reality, he said it was going to form ESO2, when in reality it forms a 1 to 2 ratio of GE. So again, when you go ahead and compare these, I feel that he was very close to really what this element was. And again, when you look at all of his predictions, all of his predictions were extremely close. What he did was he said that the elements were periodic. And that word periodic is very similar to a calendar. What I mean by that is when you start on or look at a calendar, you start on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and guess what? 
you eventually get back to Sunday. So a calendar is a repeating pattern. And what he said was his periodic table was a periodic law. And periodic law is just that. The properties of the elements are a periodic or a repeating function when we organize them by atomic mass. Now, what we're saying is he put his lightest element first, and he put his heaviest element last. And he said that the elements were going to have this repeating pattern when we organize them by their atomic masses. Henry Mosley comes along, and what he does is he starts looking at Mendeleev's periodic table. Uh, technology is a little bit better. And about 1913, he finds out that Mendeleev wasn't completely correct. There were a few of the elements that were misplaced. And what he did was he did an x-ray experiment. And during this x-ray experiment, he found that there was an integral positive charge. Now think in math, integer, whole number. So he found that every single element had an integer or integral positive charge. That integral positive charge, you know, is the atomic number. So what he did was he organized his periodic table by increasing atomic number. Now, when we go ahead and look at Mendeleev's periodic table, for example, he would have had argon here, and he would have had potassium where argon was. Another one was cobalt and nickel. He would have had those two actually switched around. And again, these two right here would have been switched, and these two here would have been switched on Mendeleev's periodic table when we go by increasing atomic mass. So what he did was he organized his periodic table by increasing atomic number. And when you organize it by increasing atomic number, he had to modify Mendeleev's periodic law to come up with the modern periodic law. And the modern periodic law just states that the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their increasing atomic numbers. What we're saying now is the chemical and physical properties of the elements are a repeating pattern when we organize them by atomic number. Now, just a couple of things on the periodic table. The periodic table is made up of horizontal rows. Those horizontal rows are going to be called periods. When you look at the periodic table, you're going to notice that there are seven horizontal rows going across. Going vertically are going to be groups or families. Groups or families are going to be your vertical columns on the periodic table. And again, when you look at the periodic table, you're going to notice that there are 18 groups. Again, we said that there are seven periods. So here's row number one, row number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are seven periods going horizontally across the periodic table. The periodic table is also organized into groups. We said there are 18 groups. Again, groups are vertical. So here is group number one group number two, group number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when you get all the way over here, here's group 16, group 17, and group 18.